Hi, uh, I just did the full moon video in which I said I was going to um, start a lesson, you know, a very casual lesson uh, about astrology in which I would start talking about what, what to take and what to leave in astrology, what things mean. Um, you know, the general starting place would be to talk about the astrological signs and what each of them means. And I will talk about that. And then to go into things like what the various different planets mean and, and um, you know, the moon in the chart and what it means if your moon is in Virgo or in Aquarius. But um, first of all, I just want to point out that everything in astrology, the most important aspect of, of astrology just generally is to do your own astrological chart and to know something about it. Your own astrological chart is like a hologram of your personality. It is, as my husband who is a scientist says, uh, uh, astrology is not a science, it's an art. There's a lot of wiggle room. Something can mean, it can mean this or it can mean that or it can mean something slightly different. Uh, or it can mean all of those at different times. Um, astrology is, uh, Western astrology is, generally speaking, not as accurate as Vedic astrology. That's because Vedic astrology, Jyotish, has an unbroken line going up back, I don't know, thousands of years. And uh, Western astrology, the line is a little more broken, thanks to the Catholic Church. Um, nonetheless, uh, there's a lot that can be learned by astrology. It's a very, very useful, useful tool for understanding yourself, really. Uh, I actually grew up uh, believing that astrology was total bullshit. I come from a very intellectual, um, creative family, and um, I was, you know, pretty much convinced it didn't really, you know, nobody in their right mind believed astrology. At one point, because I'd had tarot cards since I was very young, and as I was getting more into the tarot, I, uh, I kind of had to learn what things in astrology meant, just because it's the oldest Western esoteric art. And as such, any other Western esoteric art refers back to astrology. Certain cards in the tarot relate to certain signs or certain planets. Uh, if you're learning how to read your palm, um, there's areas of the palm that relate to different planets. So you kind of have to know something about astrology. So I thought, all right, I know it's total bullshit. What's the fastest way I can learn astrology? Uh, well, you know, I've got a big family. I've got you know, four siblings, I'll get their birth times, I'll get their charts made up, and I'll get some books, and I'll, I'll just like figure it out. So I did that, and I was blown away. I was blown away when I first looked at my own chart. Things that I had known about myself, that I'd always known about myself, were there, like presented very, very elegantly and really specifically things about each of my siblings and who they were and how we related to each other and how we related to our parents and how we, how we um, perceived our parents differently. Uh, all of that was there as I looked at my own chart and as I looked at each of their charts as well. So there's definitely something to it. What it is is similar to the palm Again, your, your astrological chart is like a, um, uh, a look at your character, and the idea is that character is fate. Once again, as I've said before, it's not that the stars determine your life. It's more that everything that exists is connected. So if you can look at uh, the macrocosmic event, what's happening, the relationship of the, of the planets, if you have a way of reading that relationship, and can relate it to a microcosmic event, your birth at a particular place and time, there's going to, some, it's going to tell you something about the energy, the energy signature, a word that I often use, a phrase that I often use. And um, people have been looking at the planets for a long time and have assigned meanings to, um, to the planets and to their movements and to certain kinds of relationships. So the most important thing about the chart is really how it looks overall. People can say, you know, there's the sun, there's the moon, there's the rising sign. These are kind of the three biggies that people know. But the really most important thing is the overall structure of the chart. 
So to give you one example of that, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you the structure of the chart for the, I just spoke about the full moon. So this is what the chart for the full moon looks like with my writing for, uh, this is for San Francisco. And um, this point in the chart, this is, it's, it says uh, zero degrees, that's the sign for Gemini. This is the beginning of the chart, that's the rising sign. And so this is, this is the beginning, that's the ascendant. And then going from here, each of these little pie shapes is a house. So I like to tell people that the, um, it's like the planets are the actors, the astrological sign that they're in is the role that they're playing, and the house is like the whole mise-en-scene, the whole setting. Um, and that, that's where the planets are most comfortable acting. And I didn't make that up. That's from um, uh, The Only Way to Learn Astrology by March and McEvers. That's a great book. I would suggest getting it. I think it's out of print, but most of the time you can find it. And you want The Only Way to Learn Astrology 1. It's a great, great book because they also help you think about astrology as a whole and not the kind of like cookie cutter cookbook. If, if, you, if you get your chart done online, just getting the chart done is fine, but don't pay to get the, uh, um, what it means, to get told what it means, because you'll just get, you'll get like 50 pages of, of different things which contradict each other and you won't know how to make any sense of it. What matters? Like here it says that you really like people and there it says, no, you know, you're really a loner. And actually, when you think about it, I mean, we, you'll find we all have bits and pieces, but looking at your chart as a whole can help you understand how it all comes together and what is most important and under which, under which circumstances are you a loner? Under which circumstances do you tend towards people? What are your strengths? What are your characteristic strengths? What are your characteristic weaknesses? And more than weaknesses, what are the characteristic issues that come up again and again and again in your life? And what is it that helps you with them? What are you, what helps you get through those? What's that hand that you are constantly being dealt again and again and again and asked to play in different set of circumstances? And how can you learn to play it? How can you know when, you know, this is going to work or that isn't? You can't ever know completely, of course. But so just this particular type of chart is, um, uh, not a difficult, not an easy chart to um, just automatically say, but you can see, I'm just going to point out a couple of things, that there's a whole big grouping of planets right here. That's called a stellium. And uh, four of them are in uh, Aries, that's that sign. And two of them, one of them is actually a point, not a planet. And two of them are in um, Pisces. Uh, they look a little closer together than they are because the ones that are in Pisces are actually fairly uh, almost a degree, a whole you know a whole sign away from the ones that are in Aries, but that shows you a conglomeration of energy in one point. Not everyone's chart looks like that. Sometimes people have planets all over the chart. Um, if you have a group of planets all grouped together, that shows a lot of energy that you have available uh, to 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 use and. Um, Usually it means that when things are really good for you, they're really good, and when things are bad, you are hit big time. If you have stuff, if you have planets all over your chart, there's a little bit more of a one door opens, another door closes, you know, you can kind of move about like that a little bit more easily. But sometimes you can be, it could be harder for you to focus on one thing. Um, Generally speaking, again, should you, you know, you should get your astrological chart done, find the date, time, and place of birth, and there's places you can get it done for free online, and just get the chart so that you know how to look at it. Generally speaking, if you have a lot of planets above the uh, midline, that tends to make you a little bit more social. Again, these are general rules. They're not at all... Um, uh, hard and fast. And planets below, uh, this, these tend to make a little more public, a little bit more needing public energy. And below, that's a little bit more home, private. If you have a lot of planets at, on the side of the chart with the rising sign, then you have a tendency to be uh, one of the ones who has to make things happen. And if you have a lot of planets on the other half 
of the chart, then usually things tend to come to you. Uh, you don't, you're not so often the initiator, which doesn't mean that you are never, but, and can be frustrating if you want something to happen and you don't quite know how to get it, you know, you're not getting the help you need. Um, so those are just a few of the basic things about looking at your chart. Uh, before I do the next one, it would be a good idea for you to, um, you know, get a copy of your chart so you can look at it. Next, I will talk more about just the, the signs and uh, what they mean and the planets, that kind of thing.